This is Ron Paul with your weekly update for August 29th. Even as a major hurricane hits the American Eastern Seaboard, the administration is determined to expand the war in Libya while threatening the regime in Syria. Is there any limit to our government's appetite to create more problems for our nation and economy? Americans may be tempted to celebrate the apparent victory of U.S. and NATO-backed rebels in Libya, since it seems the Gaddafi regime is overthrown. But I believe any enthusiasm for our Libyan misadventure is premature. The Obama administration attacked Libya without a constitutional declaration of war, without congressional authorization, without meaningful consultation with Congress, and without a dollar being authorized from the House or Senate. It was a war started by a president who turned to the United States for its authority and ignored the authority of the U.S. Congress. Are we better off as a nation by ignoring and debasing our Constitution? Are we better off having spent more than a billion dollars attacking a country thousands of miles away that had not threatened us? Are we more financially sound having expanded the empire to include yet another protectorate and probable long-term military occupation? Are we more admired throughout the world for getting involved in yet another war? Still, many will claim that getting rid of Libyan ruler Gaddafi was worth it. They will say that the ends justify the means. As the civilian toll from NATO bombs adds up and a war started under the guise of protecting a civilian population, even the initial argument for intervention is ridiculous. We should not forget that there were no massacres taking place in Libya before the NATO attack. The attack was dubbed a prevented humanitarian intervention, but as soon as NATO planes started bombing, civilians started dying. Gaddafi may well have been a tyrant, but as such he was no worse than many others that we support and count as allies. Disturbingly, we see a pattern of relatively secular leaders in the Arab world being targeted for regime change with the resulting power vacuum being filled by much more radical elements. Iraq post Saddam is certainly far closer to Iran than before the U.S. invasion. Will Libya be any different? We already see grisly reprisals from the U.S.-backed rebels against their political opponents. These are disturbing scenes of looting, lawlessness, and on the part of the rebels. We know that some rebel factions appear to be allied with Islamic extremists and others seem to have ties to the CIA. They also appear to have a penchant for killing each other as well as supporters of the previous regime. The tribal structure of Libyan society all but ensures that an ongoing civil war is on the agenda rather than the Swiss-style democracy that some intervention advocates suggest is around the corner. What is next after such a victory? With the big Western scramble to grab Libya's oil reserves amid domestic political chaos and violence, does anyone doubt that NATO ground troops are not being prepared for yet another occupation? Neoconservatives continue to dominate our foreign policy regardless of the administration in power. They do not care that we are bankrupt as they are too blinded by their desire for empire and their affection for the entangling alliances we have been rightly counseled to avoid. They have set their sights next on Syria, where the U.S. moves steadily toward intervention in another domestic conflict that has nothing to do with the U.S. Already the U.S. president has called for regime change in Syria while adding new sanctions against the Syrian regime. Are U.S. bombers far behind? Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday. The text can be found on my website, www.house.gov, under the heading Texas Straight Talk. Thanks for calling.